Welcome back to The Fix with me, Karima Brown. It's now time to unpack the weekend headlines and to help me do just that, I'm joined in the studio by broadcaster and political analyst Eusebius Makaiser, as well as Sikonati Manchancha, the deputy editor of Scorpio's investigative unit. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for um, joining me here on the uh, uh, the fix. You know, newspaper section, rather, of The Fix. Um, let's start with the Business Times. It's got a very interesting uh, headline. Uh, Sikunati, do you want to have a first bite at your former employer's uh, title? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the Business Times is leading with uh, uh, yet another economic panel to advise uh, the government and yes. Cyril Ramaphosa how to kickstart economic growth. Now, the first question, obviously, is how on earth are we having so many panels? <laughs> when, when are we actually getting to do the work that's supposed to be done? These people are going to talk about smart, brilliant people, your economists, all of them are here. What's missing? Real business people who actually know how to run businesses, small businesses and large businesses. There's there's 18 people, including Tabi Lioka, Ewandi Lesifobo, and 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 many others. All of them university professors and economists. Mm. No business person in there. Okay, so Eusebius, um, many people have also commented on the uh, ratio of male and females uh, that are in there. And of course, the females are few and far between. Do you share Sikunanti's view that you should actually have CEOs on that uh, panel as well? No, I think the first thing you said is more important than having CEOs. We should stop having talk shops. And I think the one thing with that President Cyril Ramaphosa, if he is watching, and I'm sure that he is because you are compulsory viewing on a Sunday morning, should come to grips with very quickly, Karima, is that you cannot govern by commissions of inquiry, you cannot govern by invoice, you cannot govern by yet another crop of advisors. What happened to Trudy Makaya? Mm -hmm. There you had someone who was impressive as well. What has she been whispering into his ear? So I share his view on that point. If we must talk about composition, sure, we should have business people in there. But quite frankly, at this stage, we need fewer panels and we need to get on with the nuts and bolts of what needs to be done to try and get more local and foreign direct investment into the economy. And that answer is not going to lie by having yet another conversation with Tabi, as much as I love Muzugisi Koko and everyone else who's on the panel. I mean, these are great individuals, but quite frankly, it is a misdiagnosis of what needs to be done. Okay, so the panel is not working for you. Let's go to the City Press. Now, the City Press really has an interesting headline. Yeah. Eusebius, read it out for me and give me your take on that story. Yeah, I'm going to combine two. I was uh, saying to Sikonati while we were prepping. So prosecutors take the fight to Cyril, and this is really about the importance of cleaning up within the state, right? And uh, there are many, obviously, useless Jacob Zuma era prosecutors within the NPA that were captured, and the Sunday Times is leading by saying crooked officials plunder state land, and a really important focus on the public works department and ministry, yes. where also we do not know the proper audit of buildings and assets that the state actually owns. Some of it is being manipulated for the personal largesse of of individual um, civil servants, uh, far-flung corners of the country. And I think what the City Press story and the Sunday Times story have in common, and here I want to praise the two newspapers, is that these are not sexy stories, but the business of rejuvenating our economy starts with a clean-up inside the state. You have focused a lot of your journalism in the last two or three years on the importance of how the state had been hollowed out. And I think what this speaks to within the NPA and the Sunday Times stories speak to is that ultimately the technocracy needs to be fit for purpose if we are to realize the vision of a new dawn. Now, Sikunati, you've covered so many of these stories around the way in which uh, senior civil servants were in fact complicit. Um, and of course, we are a rights-based uh, country. Um, you, we saw the fight back from someone like Tom Moyani. It took a long time. And of course, uh, the Nugent Commission was exceptional in the sense that it uh, said, before we complete our job, this man actually is not fit for purpose. Um, should we be doing the same with these officials? Again, there's, we, we are now talking more commissions of inquiry and all of that. If we were to, to do this, we would have to subject them to a commission of inquiry. What we actually do need 
is uh, get people in chains, get people arrested and prosecuted. Mm. That's why. That, that's how you clean up. But how does Shamila Batoy do that when Jacob Zuma on the uh, on his political deathbed as president of the country made sure that he has his people in there? I mean, Mwepone Noko is the the head of the NPA in the northwest, where the premier, the former premier, is being accused of being involved in a hit on somebody. So. These people are, of course, um, part of the fight back. It's not accidental that they are there. That, that, that's the difficulty. He, Zuma and his people made absolutely sure that they will leave behind a, a prosecution agency that will do absolutely nothing about all the corruption he presided over. And uh, the, the difficulty now is uh, in South Africa, there's that thing called the Constitution, which uh, deems people innocent until they are proven guilty. <laughs> no. you, you would have to... To, 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 to prove them guilty, and that's going to take a lot of time. Uh, we, we should have really uh, uh, some, some speedy, me mechanism. speedy mechanisms that, that, that look at the emergency that we have. Now, the Justice Ministry did just that. It is gazetted, it has gazetted um, a, an, a mechanism to fast track some of these cases to at least get the money back. But you see, because I know that you are uh, a lawyer in your heart, how do we respect the rule of law, but also give haste to a process that will restore confidence and, more importantly, that was, will disable the people who are fighting back the cleanup in the state. I think, firstly, we've got to recognize the point implicit in your question, your last question to Sikonati, that we should not re-inscribe trampling on the rule of law because we want to have some quick wins. Otherwise, we will be re-inscribing the really horrid values of the J Jacob Zuma era into a new attempt to try and make sure that we are newly committed to the values of the Constitution. In other words, we should be patient about the importance of due process. However, the way you can do that and still instill confidence in the public desperate to see some early wins is to cherry-pick your best possible cases in terms of the odds of winning them so that people can see here are three or four case studies of Shamali Batoy with the help of investigative special uh, priority units within the criminal justice system successfully finding and prosecuting some of these civil servants. So you can't go after all of them, but for goodness sake, all the people who have to work together within the ecosystem of justice, you get together and you ask yourself which cases are the ones that are the most ready where we can prioritize so that people can see at the level of perception that there are in fact results. Okay, now let's talk about one that seems to be obvious, how the VBS bank was in fact fleeced. And it looks like um, exactly. several parties have been involved, but you've been focusing on uh, the EFF in particular, which is the headline in the Mail and Guardian, yes. how VBS uh, gave Floyd, uh, you know, an upgrade. Talk us through why this is not able to stick to the EFF because they basically banned you and Abba Mugani from attending any of the press events. But what prevents the state from acting against those who are implicated in the VBS mess? Karima, the VBS matter is the easiest that yeah. any prosecutor could, could, could have done. I do not know why there are no arrests yet. I mean, Terry Mutau did a fantastic job, and he told us that this was the most unsophisticated crime uh, that, that, that was perpetrated against this bank. Now, the Melian Guardian is leading again with a piece similar to last week's uh, on, on Floyd's uh, Range Rover, except this time they got him admitted, admitting mm. that, uh, yes, I got the money uh, from VBS, but what's the problem with it? The money is clean. It's, uh, my, my it's brother, been washed. Yes, my younger <laughs> brother has paid back his loans. But, but here's an important story again. Totally related to this, the Sunday Times on page two is leading with a story on Musi Maimane. Uh, uh, driving uh, a Stein of uh, Fortuna. <laughs> and City Press <laughs> driving a, a, a Fortuna donated, a Toyota Fortuna donated by Steinhoff and Musi Maimane living in a house in which it is not known whether he pays rent or what. He yeah. declared the house as his own in the, in the, in the member's declaration, uh, which, which turns out to be a lie. The, the house is owned by a vessel, Jacobs, a businessman in KwaZulu-Natal, four million rands house, 
Musi Maimane is not able to tell the people of South Africa and indeed the Democratic Alliance how much he's paying in rent. Yeah. He was reluctant to release uh, the Steinhoff vehicle back to Steinhoff uh, when the allegations of, yes. of fraud uh, came up. Now Floyd admits that he's uh, been benefiting from the money uh, stolen from VBS. At site. He says it's clear. In 30 seconds, you see, because we're closing. Um, how is it possible for the Democratic Alliance to escape the scrutiny of the media that has been placed on the ANC, for example, and the EFF? Only because they're boring, <laughs> which is a really bad reason for us as journalists to not keep the scrutiny on. But now they've got a good leader who's, <laughs> who's bringing them into the fault. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I think Karima speaks to the inconsistency. Obviously, if you're the governing party and you have the lion's share of opportunity for corruption, the ANC will be covered disproportionately so and justifiably so. But I think we need to do more to ask tough questions of the DA. What is interesting about the DA stories in both the City Press and the Sunday Times is that when the factions start chowing each other, then stuff emerges into the public space, even if the journalists are not keen to leak them and find them. All right. Thank you so very much, Sikrinati and Yusibi. It's a pleasure, as always, uh, to have you. Well, you've had your fix for the week. See you next Sunday. Thank you for watching.